kitchen today and we're really lucky to be joined by um, Katie Sheen who is the founder of the Astro Brain Tumour Fund, um, a charity set up specifically to support those with low grade brain tumours. So it's lovely to have you here today Katie Thank and come you. to Thank you for have a me. chat and discuss um, the issues really around the use of ketogenic therapy by individuals who want to use it to support their brain tumour management and their brain tumour treatment. Yeah. So uh, it'd be great if you could just talk to us a little bit about your experience and, and why you found yourself in this situation. Yes, thanks so much for inviting me to be here. Yeah, that's great. So um, yes, I founded Astro Brain Tumour Fund back in 2001 in response to the fact that my sister's husband had been diagnosed with a low-grade glioma and there was no research in the UK at that point. Um, so we're still going 15 years later, um, but during that time I trained in nutritional therapy at the Institute for Optimum Nutrition down in yes. London. Um, and it was whilst I was doing my dissertation that I found research papers about the ketogenic diet <clears throat> and um, that was difficult from a personal point of view because by then Paula died and we hadn't found it and then suddenly I found this paper showing that two young children with GBM, the most aggressive form of brain cancer, mm -hmm. had had their lives extended by using ketogenic dietary therapy. And that was the only time that I'd found that kind of evidence. And I, so I thought, oh, well, this is interesting. There must be research papers that follow up on this. And I couldn't find anything mm -hmm. apart from Tom Seafried in the US was doing some exploratory research using mouse models, but nothing else in humans. I couldn't believe it mm -hmm. because it's such an aggressive form of cancer. It's so hard to live with. And as I say, by then we'd lost Paul to it that I felt that if there was anything that offered a glimmer of hope, we really yes. needed to follow up on yes. that. So that was where it began. And then eventually, you know, we met. Yes. And I gradually got yes. to know Matthew's friends. And now, of course, we run the support service and we fund the support service between yes. us so that we can yes. reach both low grade and high grade. Yeah. And it makes such a difference. I mean, the work that we do, again, we started out really with one individual who approached us who had GBM. Um, and he had been trying to get support and guidance for over a year. Really? Um, and, and that's how we started out, because we were aware of the research that had been going on with our colleagues, our research colleagues in the States. Mm -hmm. We knew there was interest. Mm -hmm. We knew there was papers, preclinical papers out there. But there really wasn't anything going on on the ground. Yeah. Because there, is, there wasn't the evidence for it clinically. Mm -hmm. but, but, the, but really, there are individuals trying to do it. So we felt it was very important to actually... Um, really stand beside those individuals and, and try and support them to do things as safely um, as, as possible and yeah. as, so that they weren't compromised um, using our expertise and experience in the management of epilepsy. Yeah. Um, but this was adults, of course, making their own choices to do it. I think um, that's a very important point because that was something that we felt as well as a charity. We knew from watching the chat groups online that people were using ketogenic dietary therapy mm -hmm. because they were finding it. Um, but it's not something that you should just experiment with by yourself. You know, there are constant interplay between your food, your genetics, your drugs that you're on, your medicines, your treatments and so on. And so as a charity, we felt that if low-grade glioma patients were going to use it anyway, what was mm. important was that we gave them access to people with as much experience as the team at Matthew's Friends. Yeah. So that it, you could do it safely yes. and be monitored. But also, very importantly, build up the evidence base because I think there's a huge danger with cancer of all forms and nutrition of all forms is, is that there is a lot of anecdotal evidence. Mm -hmm. And as a patient, which I became myself last year, um, it's overwhelming because you so want something to hold on to that can mm -hmm. hopefully make a positive difference. But without a clinical evidence base, you're swimming around without a life jacket. There's so many, there's so many things out there, Absolutely. aren't there? It's really, really hard. Absolutely. Very hard. So that's, yeah. that's, that's something that I think is very important, is that um, by funding Matthew's Friends, and hopefully, if you're watching this, if you can fundraise and help them as well, they can employ more staff, they can build up these clinical case studies to build the evidence base, because we need to know 
how effective this diet can be, if it's effective, what it can do, who it can work for, whether it can affect the course of brain tumours or whether it's just about quality of life. And I use that phrase just because actually mm. we are all going to die at some point. Yeah. Every human will die at some point and what's important is how we live. And if this diet can help people to live well, then that's something that's really worth fighting for and discovering more about. Yeah, I think it is very, very important to say that we there is so many unknowns in this area. There is really so little um, concrete evidence as yet, and so this is why we really need a clinical trial to really try and bring together both the, the medical aspects as well as the individual journey, for the individual on the ketogenic therapy, and bring everything together really to understand whether there are concrete benefits. Absolutely. And it makes it worthwhile, yeah. you know, it's got to be worthwhile. Absolutely. And I think that that's a very important point is that we don't yet know what ratio we should be following. No, we don't no. really know whether we should be measuring ketones or glucose, whatever. And of course, ketones and glucose change constantly. Absolutely. So that's yeah. definitely yeah. some really important advice I would give to people. Don't chase the numbers to the point where yeah. it makes you miserable. It is so stressful having cancer anyway. Yes. And having yeah. putting that additional pressure on yourself to think, if I don't hit the numbers, I'm going to die, you know, is just... Uh, just not the worst it's thing. it's just awful that mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. so it's moving away from chasing numbers which it's important to record the numbers because we're building an evidence base if we've got the numbers then we've got something to work with but what we all increasingly find is that if you're stressed your glucose levels change mm -hmm. if you're tired your glucose levels change ketones change for all treatment your glucose levels change. absolutely <laughs> they change a lot particularly if you take something like dexamethasone yes. Yes. your yes. glucose levels will yes. change but you have to take the dexamethasone absolutely. because yes short term you've got to get the edema down yeah. and so that's a really important thing if, if people know anything about mindfulness which is what I spend a lot of my time teaching and I use in my own life such a lot it's about living in the moment and yeah. connecting with what's true for you at that mm. particular mm. time so mindful eating is about really connecting to the foods as you're choosing them thinking what am I being drawn to and I wonder why that is Am I thinking because I've read something or am I actually feeling drawn to these foods? It needs to be a combination of the both is that you read something, you think, I wonder if that will work. You try that out, see how you feel, but it's yeah. got to be done on how you mm -hmm. feel. Mm -hmm. And then it's about this constant adjust adjustment. Mm -hmm. And that's true for all of us, actually. Whatever dietary model we are all following is that we do get into this habit of eating the same thing every day. Mm -hmm. But every day is different. Why do we eat the same thing every day? It's much more um, supportive to ourselves to be in tune with how we feel, to make these constant adjustments because that's what balance is all about of course mm -hmm. if you're balanced you're actually always making slight adjustments in mm -hmm. order to stay mm -hmm. on that central point rather than rigidly yes. following things which can push you down a path mm -hmm. that maybe you shouldn't be going mm -hmm. down no and again it's, a, it's it is about finding that right the right direction the right balance for, mm -hmm. for a very every individual it doesn't have to be necessarily ketogenic or nothing no Absolutely. Because there are so many positive things that you can do with food, yeah. and um, we, you know, I'm aware that the way that I eat is it, it may be different from others. The mm -hmm. way that you ate before you went onto a ketogenic diet because yeah. of your cancer was different. So everybody's got a different route and journey mm -hmm. towards the changes, and some people are obviously closer to this way of eating so it wouldn't be as big a journey to go yeah. on some people are a long way off Absolutely. and so really making positive changes from where you are at the time is great mm. so I think it's really really important to just try and get yourself in the direction of sort of lowering carbs so instead of being very meticulous maybe to start with especially if you're on a fairly high carbohydrate diet just really try and increase the amounts of vegetables and, and fruits and berries in your diet and try and drop out the, the starchy items. Mm -hmm. So it's a bit of a motorway approach. You sort of take the main road down there to try and get yourself in the realm of lower carbohydrate, but you don't have to be really meticulous about it. So it could all be just exploring new ideas instead of having potato with meals, having, um, you can have mashed cauliflower, you can mm -hmm. grate cauliflower and stir fry it, have cauliflower rice. Um, you can make soups with cauliflower, broccoli, you can stir fry vegetables, got lovely things like kale, spinach, mm. 
which you can make soups and stir fries, incorporate into all sorts of meals. Elements such as avocado, incorporating that, maybe using it in snacks, salads, mm. there's all sorts of things. And what did you like to do with your avocados? Well, funnily enough, with avocados, and I, I used to do this even before I was on ketogenic diet, is just to slice them in half um, mm. lengthways, take out the stone and fill the gap left by the stone with oil, mm. and then just scoop them out with a teaspoon. <laughs> about snacks and, and quick items like that maybe when you were out and about? Um, primarily nuts, so um, mixed nuts like this, I went for yes. the unsalted ones. Mm -hmm. um, occasionally I would have something like a boiled egg, but for me personally, if I ate too much protein, I know that I dropped out of ketosis. Mm -hmm. So at the time where I was deeper in ketosis, actually I, I would have gone for something a little bit higher in fat rather yeah. than a protein-based snack. Yes. And that's, that is important that whenever you're having anything, anything that's contributing any carbohydrate or protein, it's, it's mm. important to get the oils and fats with them. So yes, you're you know, using the nuts and things and the avocado and olives mm. and maybe the odd little bit of, of cheese or something like that. They're great ideas for snacks. My advice to everyone would be start from where you are and see where the easy changes are. So if your main source of sugar and high refined carbohydrate foods are on your snacks, then work on your snacks first, mm. then maybe work on breakfast and make that into a meal. I always used to think of breakfast as being like lunch and that steers me away from cereals and toast and all sorts of mm. processed foods. Yes. And again, that was something that I've been doing for years actually. Yes. So that felt very natural just to just add more fats to the kind of breakfast that I was having mm. already, which I say most people thought looked like lunch. Um, and in terms of recipes, there are now some really great recipe books out there. But at the time, I just used the Matthews Friends one. And of course, on your website, you've got so many great resources and you sent me so many really, really helpful pieces of information yes. that I would say to anybody watching this, contact Matthew's friends, raise a bit of money for them so that they can employ more dietitians like yourself because you are absolutely invaluable. Oh, but really, take advantage of the support that's here for you. Please don't do it alone. There are lots of people that can really help. Yes.